This is Vector Addition in Two Dimensions, Part 2. In the previous discussion, I looked at how to solve this problem using right triangle trigonometry. But this problem also lends itself really nicely to using cosine and sine law for non-right triangles to solve. And it's actually fewer steps. Um, it's just the equations are slightly more complicated. And uh, I just want to show the method for using um, sine and cosine law. So I'm going to start off the same way. I'm going to put a north, south, east, and west direction indicator on the top of my page. I'm going to draw a vector diagram. So here's my first vector. It's the vector that represents the plane traveling 170 kilometers per hour towards the west. Then I have my second vector, the wind blowing. I'm going to add that to the end of my previous vector again. Uh, my reference direction is east, so I'm going to go off at an angle 34.0 degrees north of east, that reference direction. The magnitude will be 90.5 kilometers per hour. So there's my vector diagram. Now I'm trying to find the resultant from my starting point to my end point. And so I'm going to label that VR, and that's going to be question mark. If I can find that and the angle from my reference direction, then I will have the answer to this problem. So uh, I have a nice non-right triangle there. I'm going to use cosine law for starters. And cosine law says that C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos c. So I'm going to let side c be the resultant velocity that I'm looking for. I am going to let side a be 170 kilometers per hour, so 170 kilometers per hour squared, plus side b is going to be 90.5 kilometers per hour, and I'm going to square that, minus 2 times A, 170 kilometers per hour, times B, 90.5 kilometers per hour, times cosine side C, which is 34.0 degrees. So I'm going to multiply that all out. And it gives me a value for c squared of 11,580.6. And I'm going to put the units in here. You might choose not to include the units. But now when I take the square root of both sides, I get a value for c that's equal to 108 kilometers per hour, which is the same answer that I got using the other method. So that's the magnitude of my resultant. Now I'm also looking for the angle of that resultant from my starting position. So if I said 90.5 was side B, then I'm going to be looking for angle B. And I'm going to use sine law to find this. So I would say that side B over sine of angle B equals side C over the sine of angle C. So side B, I said, was 90.5 kilometers per hour. And sine of angle B, I don't know. And that should equal side C, which I just found as 180 kilometers per hour over angle C, which is sine of angle C, 34.0 degrees. So there is my equation. I'm going to solve for my unknown B. And when I do that, I just cross multiply and then divide by 108 kilometers per hour. And then go second function sine. And I find my angle B to equal 28. 0.1 degrees. So if I go back to my vector diagram, I can say the angle is 28.1 degrees. And if I'm using the navigator's method, I'm going to say north of west. 
And if you're using the Cartesian method, you can just say 180 minus 28.1. So 152 degrees. So 152 degrees is just saying the same thing. So that's just a different way of finding a solution to that problem.